it is one of the earliest described glycogen storage disease and the classic form there is deficiency of glucose 6 phosphatase enzyme what is the inheritance of this disease as i have already told So now we come to the discussion of individual GSDs. The first important one is von Gierke disease. Some people call it as von Gierke disease, some call it as von Gierke disease, some even call it as von Gierke disease. Pronunciation doesn't matter. In MCQ entrance exam, what matters is whether you know the correct answer or not. So von Gierke disease, what are the points you should know? It is one of the earliest described glycogen storage disease and the classic form there is deficiency of glucose 6 phosphatase enzyme what is the inheritance of this disease as i have already told all the gsds they show autosomal recessive inheritance and so this is also an autosomal recessive disorder the gene for glucose 6 phosphatase which is the deficient enzyme it is normally located on chromosome 17 q21 any deficiency of this enzyme will produce von Gierke disease also remember that the translocase GSD1B gene is SLC37A4. It is located on chromosome 11Q23. What exactly is happening in von Gierke disease? Let us try to understand. See, remembering the features are uh, is one thing, but only if you understand the reason, you will not only be able to mark the correct answer and remember the features, but also be able to answer statement-based questions which are asked in exam. So there is, you know that when, when glycogen is getting converted, glycogenolysis is happening, the terminal step for conversion into glucose is mediated by the enzyme known as glucose 6-phosphatase. Where does this enzyme act? You have this, this cycle which is happening. You have glucose 6-phosphate getting converted into glucose. And the enzyme catalyzing this is known as glucose 6 phosphatase. This is the enzyme which catalyzes this step. Now, in von Gierke disease, due to some reason, this glucose 6 phosphatase enzyme becomes deficient. Mutation occurs in the gene, and so this conversion does not happen. So, the structure of the glycogen will not change, but it will increase in amount. That is what was mentioned in classification. When this conversion into glucose will not happen, what it will lead to? This will lead to recurrent attacks of hypoglycemia. So, the first clinical manifestation which will arise due to less glucose is hypoglycemia. It will be recurrent refractory hypoglycemia occurs in neonates as well as in infants and continues to occur in childhood as well. So, hypoglycemia will be the first consequence of absence of this enzyme. Second thing, now glucose 6-phosphate is getting accumulated, it is not getting converted to glucose. So, what will happen? This glucose 6-phosphate will be diverted towards a pathway known as pentose phosphate pathway. So, PPP pathway. This pentose phosphate pathway will form more amount of purines. These purines, when they degrade, they will get converted into uric acid. So, they will form higher amounts of uric acid. This will produce hyperuricemia in the patient. So, you will have hyperuricemia and gout-like changes along with hypoglycemia. Third thing, this glucose 6-phosphate will also get converted into pyruvate. This will also form pyruvate. This pyruvate in turn will form more amount of lactate and this lactate will cause lactic acidosis in the patient. So, you will have features of lactic acidosis happening. This pyruvate will also get converted into acetyl coenzyme A. This acetyl coenzyme A will be diverted towards the lipogenesis pathway. It will form increased amounts of lipids. So, increased lipid formation will happen, which will cause hyperlipidemias. It is mainly the hypertriglyceridemia which is seen in these patients. So, hyperlipidemia. So, you have hypoglycemia, hyperuricemia, lactic acidosis and hyperlipidemias. Other, 
also remember that this glucose 6 phosphate and its preceding uh, metabolites they will be accumulated in various organs predominantly liver and kidneys are affected and their dysfunction sometimes happens uh, splenomegaly is rare to absent so you can put a star and write a very important point that most of these patients are found to have hepatomegaly renomegaly large kidney but little to no splenomegaly so if you have a patient with suspected gst or suspected iem patient has massive splenomegaly with minimal hepatomegaly minimal renomegaly you will not think of von gerke disease so th this is a useful point which has been asked in mcq entrance exam and then you have the other features which can be seen in walker gerk disease the other features which you need to remember they include they these children have a doll like face so doll like faces having a cute doll like face is not always a good thing uh, in medical profession if you are a clinician if you have a uh, baby face people don't take you seriously uh, that is one aspect of course uh, in if you have a doll like face in kids it it is sometimes associated with certain syndromes it is sometimes associated with inborn errors of metabolism the common one is von gerke disease what is a doll like face there will be chubby cheeks there will be a rounded face these children will have protuberant larger trunk protuberant abdomen larger trunk and thin extremities that type of a face that type of a structure is known as doll like face in fact the whole body is doll like just like dolls if you find they have a prominent uh, face and trunk and thin extremities that is how these children look like but the term mentioned for that is doll like face second thing you will find that these children have failure to thrive third they will have a short stature and fourth they will have delayed puberty once the pubertal age comes so these are the various manifestations which occur in von gerke disease what are the complications which are common in von gerke disease complication is something which is important for need super speciality and the complications are not prominently mentioned in the other indian textbooks the complications include pulmonary hypertension pancreatitis renal failure renal failure predominantly is of the chronic renal failure type and features suggestive of fsgs and interstitial nephritis that is tubular dysfunction also tends to occur they may have proteinuria uh, hematuria and uh, granular casts and progressive fall in gfr in untreated stages mainly in the adulthood and they there may be hepatic adenomas these hepatic adenomas may sometimes show malignant transformation into hepatocellular carcinomas the problematic thing is normally you have a patient of adenoma turning into hcc you have elevation in alpha fetoprotein and sometimes carcino embryonic antigens here in von gerke disease it is found due to unexplained reasons this elevation in tumor markers is not seen so the follow up is a problem and long term mortality morbidity is also related in adulthood is related to the malignant transformation so you can put a star and write the keyword that rise in afp and cea and other tumor markers is not as high or sensitive for ars for hcc development as it occurs in other conditions like which are non gst related hepatocellular carcinoma so this is a important point very prominently mentioned in nelson at two places so this is something you should know now mo moving to the treatment of von gerke disease frequent feeds are essential because hypoglycemia is there so in infancy overnight nasogastric drip feeding may be needed to maintain normal glycemia uncooked corn starch based diet may is appropriate in older children a medium chain triglyceride supplementation improves the out, uh, the growth in these children fructose sucrose lactose and sorbitol should be restricted in the diet because their metabolism is also affected glucose 6 phosphatase is in, involved in their metabolism as well 
The role, what is the role of ACE inhibitors? Enalapril is useful in patients with microalbuminuria. So early renal involvement responds to proteinuria responds to enalapril. Enalapril, in fact, is the only uh, recommended ACE inhibitors for use in these children. Other ACE inhibitors are not recommended. ARBs are not recommended. Liver transplantation, of course, can be tried. And uh, this is the last step in the management of Von Gehrig disease.